Does a grand test score look like this, this, this and this even after months of NEET PG preparation? You are incredibly confused, sad, depressed, anxious that all your hard work is nothing in front of thousands of aspirants that are doing much better than you. I went from a rank of 19,000 in May 2024 INICT to rank of 2,500 in NEET PG 3 months later. And after that new normalization process, people don't seem to realize the importance of grand tests while getting your dream branch in a dream college and getting the perfect score in NEET PG. See, basically, you need to attempt 190 questions out of 200 questions in NEET PG. Okay, the simple statistics tells us that the more number of attempts that you give, one in four probability is that, that you will get the answer correct. And when you have that, you can attempt a high number of questions regardless of your shifts. So you have the morning shift and you have the evening shift, two shifts in NEET PG. It really doesn't matter what shift you are in because you need to have a very high attempt in each of these shifts and the grand tests are going to help you in doing exactly that in building a confidence to attempt any question in any shift of NEET PG. So then don't be scared of the number of wrongs that you get. You need to focus on what motivates you and what really motivates you is the number of corrects. So at this point, you need to give one grand test one week. Fix a day, you know, Sunday. I'm going to attempt the grand test in the morning. I'm going to analyze it in the afternoon. And in the evening session, I'm going to take a break. So this is a secret to review a grand test in just three to four hours and not waste your entire day in reviewing a grand test. So you see a grand test should prepare you for the main day of the exam, the main day of the NEET PG. You should not really give a crap about the number of scores, the number of corrects that you get. You need to simulate the exam environment, okay? So once you have done answering a grand test and during your answering a grand test, you know, don't be distracted. Take only one washroom break or don't take at all. You know, train your bladder to stay for those three to three and three and a half hours. See, this may seem very funny, but on the day of the exam, when you have 100 people in the same room, correct? You are at your peak anxiety levels. You may want, you may get easily distracted by somebody else's computer error, by somebody else talking, okay? by the examiners that are talking in front of you. You know, these are very small, small things because when you're in your home, in a controlled environment, you don't realize of all of those things. The exam center that you may be going to may not have AC or it may have AC and you're feeling very cold. It may have a lot of mosquitoes. The keyboards don't work. The mouse, you have to uh, press twice or thrice to get the answer correct. These are very practical points which we don't consider into, um, into making because we are in a very perfect environment at home and giving the grand tests. So once you are reviewing your questions, you review them subject wise. Okay, let's say you pick up orthopedics. Go through the number of corrects that you get in that particular subject. If you're getting a particular question correct, you need to see why you got it correct. Was it a well calculated guess? If so, congratulations, you know, you are developing the skill of correctly guessing. Now you tell me, why are you guessing it correctly? Are you guessing it currently simply because of Tukke Basi or you actually eliminated the options? You narrowed down those four options into two options and then you took a Tukke Basi into 50-50 push and then you took a Tukke Basi in one of the options. Did you track it down properly logic by logic or you simply gave it correct? So see, even if you simply get an answer correct, right? It doesn't really matter because you have got it correct. But those questions where you had to break it down logically, you know, that means that you have the art, you have mastered the art of eliminating options and getting a question correct. That, and that is a really good sign. You need to analyze why you are doing this, why you are breaking down the options and, and hitting one answer. You need to figure out that can we use the same principle in getting those hard questions correct for NEET PG. And sometimes even in the questions that you get correct right, go through the explanations. Just skim through the explanations just to see that whether the logic was correct. Is there any other additional information that I need to put into my 20th notebook or into my notes that will help me to solve a similar question in the future. Now if you get a question wrong, you need to see, okay, if, was it a logical fallacy on your part or was it a conceptual fallacy? If it was a conceptual fallacy, you need to go back to your notes. You need to read properly. You need to go back even to your main videos and see if you can actually ingrain this concept into your brain or not. Okay, if it's a fact-based fallacy, you need to see whether this topic is an important topic or the coaching platform has just simply put a random topic in front of you so that you know they can market their 
grand test as some very tough grand test or uh, very comparative grand test you know a lot of coaching platform do this they put random topics into grand test mm-hmm. or they put really high level pg level questions in the grand test just to market the grand test as the most comparative ones and therefore you need to pick your coaching platform very wisely i be the cerebellum user right from 4 to 5 months before need pg simply because i saw that you have people like zanab map apurva sir praveen sir gobind rai garg sir Sparsh Gupta, all of the people who are industry experts in their subjects. So at least they will not mess. They are not the business-minded people who will uh, create unnecessary stress in the mind of need PG aspirants by putting irrelevant information. So I compared the grand test of Cerebellum and other coaching platforms, and I found that although Cerebellum has really good questions, they don't ask bullshit questions just to mess up with your mind. They ask you proper questions. from previous year topics that you can actually get in an EPG exam they themselves makes the questions for the grand test and they don't leave it to some other intern to make you know grand test questions they themselves hand pick those questions so much so that they even have previous year question based grand test would actually help you to revise previous year topics and they are previous year topics the small twist so that really helps you to prepare the previous year question part okay and these grand tests are very practical they are asked in simple english they are asked with the most frequently asked images in the questions and so when i took this shift from other coaching platform grand tests to cerebellum i noticed that my uh, grand test scores were actually boosting because i was actually answering only those questions that were relevant that would be asked in a neat pg exam and i noticed that the questions that were there they were very practical they were designed in such a way that uh they reflected the need pg or the ini pattern of the last few years so if you're thinking of using a particular platform for need pg to give you a grand test don't think anywhere else apart from cerebellum because i have personally used them i have found them to be very practical very easy to use and very and the explanations are very crisp with appropriate tables and diagrams also when you're reviewing grand tests right you'll be doing a lot of silly mistakes and although we receive a huge setback when we say that we are doing silly mistakes you should not be affected by it because doing silly mistakes means one thing that you will not repeat that mistake in the future you should actually thank yourself that you are doing silly mistakes because you will not be repeating those silly mistakes in the main exam because forget about these grand tests okay what you do on the day of the exam okay that is the most important thing see if you're doing let's say 100 silly mistakes in the month of in 3 months prior to need pg you will not be repeating those silly mistakes on the day of the exam okay the key to minimizing the silly mistakes that you make in your grand test is to be calm and the only way that you're going to be calm on the day of the need pg exam is if you frequently give grand test if you're exposing your brain if you're simulating the need pg environment on the day of the exam you are going to be calm you are going to be completely stoic you are going to focus on the question and nothing else no other distraction is going to penetrate your mind you are going to be calm cool and focused only on the question that is there in front of you and you will not be distracted this will only come if your mind and body is continuously exposed to that high stress environment and for that in the next 3 months that are leading up to a neat pg preparation you need to give at least 10 to 12 grand tests it is possible see you need to train your mind okay and i don't know how many times to repeat myself over here but you have to stress test your mind rereading your notes solving mcqs is really good but giving grand tests living with the uncertainty of the normalization process living with the uncertainty of solving one question in one minute that is actually going to prepare you for the need pg exam so see in my case when i got a 19000 rank in ini ct it was with some of the best doctors in this country correct and going from that to a rank of 2500 in just 3 months it is not luck okay it is a lot of hard work that is involved i answered grand tests i reviewed grand tests i figured out what were my weak topics what were my Uh, shortfalls when i came to answering grand tests in a very highly stressful environment you need to do the same you need to take the stupid leap of faith trust yourself you know have this pseudo confidence that you are going to do it 
एंड देर इज नो अदर वे टू सिंपली एक्सप्लेन टू यू गाइज यू नीड टू बी कॉन्फिडेंट ऑफ योर एबिलिटी की आई एम गोट गिव माई बेस्ट आई डोंट केयर वट हैपन्स टू द एफर्ट्स ऑन द डे ऑफ नीट पी जी एग्जाम आई एम गोइंग टू बिलीव इन माई सेल्फ यू आर गोइंग टू बिलीव इन योर सेल्फ इन द नेक्स्ट टू एंड हाफ मंथ्स लीडिंग टू नीट पी जी बिकॉज इफ यू डोंट बिलीव इन योर सेल्फ नो बडी एल्स इज गोइंग टू बिलीव इन यू नॉट योर मॉम नॉट जैन मैम नॉट योर पेरेंट्स नॉट योर फ्रेंड नॉट योर गर्ल फ्रेंड नॉट योर बॉय फ्रेंड नॉट योर सपोर्टिव पीपल इन योर लाइफ यू हैव टू हैव दिस सूडो कॉन्फिडेंस दैट I believe in my preparation I believe in the process and I am going to do it see none of the preparation that you do none of the grand test marks that you get before neat pg none of it means anything if you don't go into the exam environment in a cool calm manner okay i have provided a detailed explanation of how you can revise in your neat pg see i have given a detailed video of how you can actually revise beyond grand test for the upcoming neat pg 2025 you're going to find the link of the video pinned up over here or down in the comments please head to that video it'll calm you it'll tell you how to go about neat pg preparation i am dr anirudh bhat a first year medicine resident in goa medical college and this is the only way that i know how to calm yourself down how to give grand tests and how to ace neat pg 2025 so be sure to watch that video and i will see you in those videos bye bye